Hello, I'm Juhanna Laurin Harju, and I want to talk about lenses. Who here has heard about the programming concept lens or optic? Quite a few. Who has used them? A bit less. Let's fix that. Okay, so well, what is this thing and what are they for? Well, let's take a trip back in time. When I first learned Haskell, I don't know, over 10 years ago, or a bit of it, what, what did dealing with nested data look like? Well, say, here's our running example. We have two records, we have authors and we have books, and books have an author. Okay, and my ex example book will be a Finnish book called Klassikko by Kari Hotakainen. So let's say we want to modify this somehow. What, what tools did the language originally provide? Well, there is this nice syntax support for updating fields of a record. So say I want to translate this book to English, so I replace the title with the classic. Well, that seems pretty good. What, what's the issue? Well, see, if I want to update a nested field, if I have nested records, this is more painful. Say I have an off by one error in the birth year of, of an author, and I want to increment it by one. Well, now I want to update the author by setting it to something that's the original author, except it's been updated, and I update the birth year. And like the beef of the thing is just that I want, want this one plus the original birth year of the author. And then there's all this clutter around. And if I, if I have even more nested records, this is going to be even more painful. But, well, it still works. So, so is, is like type functional programming doomed? Is, is there no way to do this, this any better? Well, okay. Then around 10 years ago, I learned Closure. And the standard library of Closure has these wonderful functions called get in, associate in, and update in that make updating, updating nested maps really trivial. You see, if I had the same thing in Closure, well, okay, if I don't have any nesting, it's pretty similar. I'll just replace the title. But if I have nested fields, there's this wonderful update in. And I'll just give it this path to the field I want to modify and the function to modify it with. And that's it. That's way better. But this looks really dynamically typed. There's this vector of keywords. How could I possibly do this in a typed language? Well, lenses are the savior that allow us to do the same thing in a typed language, like Haskell. So, what are they? Well, I will again have the same example, but now I have this thing, field title, here. It's a le lens that lets me focus on the single field called title in a record, and I have a new value that I want to put there, the classic. Set is like asos in. Well, I'm not yet dealing with any nesting, so like, is this just like a really complicated replacement for the previous syntax? No. The great thing about lenses is that you can combine them. So if I first want to focus on the author, and on the author I want to focus on the birth year, I can do that. I can combine these two lenses to get a new lens that lets me focus on the nested field. And I want to update it with a function that increments by one. And I have this function over, that's like updating. And it works. Now that's fantastic. There was a way to do this in a typed functional programming language. So here's a quick recap of just lenses. They let you focus on a single field, and you can combine them to access nested fields. And there are functions like the ones in Closure Standard Library. You have this view, that's like get in. You have set, that's like associating, and over, that's like updating. But this is not the only thing you can do with the lens library. You can do wonderful other things. So let's take a look at the other things. Sometimes you don't know if you can focus or somet on something. For example, you have a collection, and you don't know if there is something in it or not, but you'd still like to focus on it. 
or you might have multiple matches. Let's look at some examples. So here we have a traversal called underscored head that allows you to focus on the first element of a list. Say here we have a string, so we can focus on the first letter of that string. And we have a fu new function, preview, that lets you check out the results of something where you want to check out if there was a result or not. Since you can also feed this the empty string, the empty string does not have a first letter, so we get nothing. But, like previously, we had these functions set and over, we can still use them. Say we have this function to upper that converts letters to uppercase on single characters. We can now use over, that's like update in. We focus on the first letter of a string and we call to upper on it and we wrap the result back in a string. So we capitalize the string. We can also replace the match with just a single value. That works as well. And finally, if you didn't match on anything, say we have the empty string and we try to convert the first letter of it to uppercase, we just don't do anything. We return the string as is. There were no, no matches, no modification. Similarly, if you try to set the matching first element when there were none, you replace nothing. So I said also something about many possible matches. So here we have another traversal called worded that allows you to focus on every single word inside a string. Okay, so how do I see what the results are? Well, there's this fu function to list off that lets me get all the matches in a list. And again, if I try to check out all words of an empty string, I get an empty list. Okay, but again, the great thing about traversals is that they compose two. They are wonderful. So now, if I want, I can focus on the first letter of every word in a string by having first this traversal worded and combining it with the head. I get the first letter of, all, of every word. I can also, again, use these to modify all of the matches, not just zero or one. I could set the first letter of every word in this string to some other letter, but more likely what I'd like to do with having multiple matches is use over. So we want to update all of the matches with a function and in this case, we can capitalize all words in a string. So, traversals let you focus on zero, one, or many things. You can read the matches with these new functions, preview and to list of, but the modification functions are the same. You can replace all matches or you can update them with a the function. And the most important thing that these compose. And finally, traversals and lenses don't live in some separate universes. When you combine a lens and a traversal, you get a traversal. If you first focus on exactly one thing, and on that thing you focus on zero to many things, you get zero to many things. Now finally, there are some wonderful traversals for dealing with JSON. Here, we have some JSON. It's a very simple JSON object. There's, there's a name field and it has a string. We can read it. Okay, works out fine. And finally, we can focus on just JSON strings. This underscore string lets us focus on only JSON strings. So if there was some other JSON value that wasn't a string, we get to skip it. This allows us to use any kind of string update functions. And if the result was not a string, well, if it just get the key name, we still get the result. It was a JSON null. But if we got, try to get the string from the null, we get nothing. And now we can combine all the things we've seen so far 
and we can correctly capitalize the name in this JSON object. And I'd like to emphasize that this is actually a function from strings to strings. You don't need to do any JSON parsing and serializing around this. It does all of that too. So here's our bigger example. We have some data in JSON. There are some employees of a company. And unfortunately, there's some broken data inside. And we were given this task that, OK, don't, don't touch the strange data. There's some name null. Uh, no one knows what it is, but it's supposed to stay there. And, and so is the whoever is the empty, empty string programmer with salary null. So, just, you know, just, just keep them there. You know? But, but you need to do something. It's a bit embarrassing that all the names are lowercase. I, I don't know what happened. And also, let's give all programmers a 5% raise. <laughs> OK, so like, how would I do this going back to closure again? Well, this was the function I quickly wrote. I'm not claiming it's the optimal and best one, but the one thing I want to highlight here is that since you have a JSON object, and then an array, and then again objects, we have this nesting of update, map, update. And finally, we, only want, to, we want to skip the broken data, so we only focus on, on strings. And this does only the capitalization. Also, if, if you squint, you might notice that it looks like the map of Italy. OK, so how, how, about, how about the lens solution then? Well, let's see. We're going to step through this. First, we're just going to take the stuff inside employees. Then there's a traversal called values that lets you focus on every single value inside a JSON array separately. On all of those, I want to focus on the name. OK, but there's still the null. I, I don't want to deal with that. So I'll only focus on the strings. Then the unpacked here is something that allows me to switch between two different string representations in Haskell. But the worded lets me focus on all the words inside these strings. And head allows me to focus on the first letters of all the words. OK. And this, again, is a function from strings to strings. It does all the JSON deserialization and serialization also. And if the thing inside the string was not JSON, well, it does nothing. How about giving everyone a raise? No, not everyone, just programmers. OK, well, it begins like the previous example, but now we also have this filtered. It allows us to restrict the focus of a traversal to only those that pass this function. So it's like filtering. And the filtering will be done, again, using these traversals that I just introduced. I check that if the role is a string and the string in the role is programmer, then it passes, and I skip everything else. Then on these that I've just filtered, I want to focus on the salary. And again, I'm only in interested in number salaries. The null salary, you know, you, you can keep that. And what I'm going to do with these? Well, I'm going to multiply by 1.05. So everyone gets a 5% raise. And you get a result like this. Programmers have been given a raise, and we fixed all the names. Yay. And it wasn't too painful. This is not everything that you can do with the lens library. There's other kinds of optics inside it, but I won't talk about them today. And all of these were using these three Haskell libraries. So lens is the main workhorse, but the stuff for dealing with JSON was from a separate library called lens ASON. And the field lens that I used to deal with the nested records is from this generic lens. There are lens libraries like this, or similar ones in other li languages as well. There's a closure library called Spectre that seems to do similar things. This PureScript library, ProFactor Optics, is very 
similar to the Haskell library. There's a Scala library called Monocle. There's also a Java library, Data Fixer Upper. It's by the make makers of Minecraft, Mojang. They used it to deal with all the different, different version, Minecraft versions, le le saved levels to fetch all the data that they wanted. Also, you can try to look up the implementation. It's not exactly trivial Java. So here's like a recap of what you've seen so far. Lenses focus on exactly one field. The match always exists. And traversals focus on, let you focus on things that might or might not exist, and let you also focus on multiple things at the same time. You can modify both with set and over. Set is, again, like the closure associating, and over is like updating. But you have different functions for reading the results. Preview lets you read something that has zero or one results. You can also use it in the case when you have many results, you will just get the first one. But if you want many results, you can read all of them with to list of. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, you were comparing the very nice Haskell lens syntax for the application to the Italy looking closure code. Uh, perhaps the comparison is not very valid because you were not using in the closure code the uh, lens library of the closure. You were mentioning this, this Spectre library. Uh, would it be valid to assume that using this Spectre library for the closure would make it look more like the Haskell lens example? It would definitely make the closure example nicer. So this was also kind of like a look at the history timeline. So that around 10 years ago, I don't think there were like very nice solutions to this problem in Haskell. Then Closure had this nice standard library, but it's kind of painful to do things, things that were in the last example. Then the Lens library came out, and it provided very nice solutions. And now, of course, there are Lens libraries then in other languages as well. Uh, what's your take on the weird subtyping hierarchy with traversals and lens and everything that uh, the Haskell compiler doesn't really understand because there's no subtyping in Haskell? Um, well, it's not exactly subtyping that's going on, but lenses fit the requirements of all the functions that take traversals. So you can use lenses whenever something accepts a traversal. And also, well, like, I, I don't want to talk about, about the implementation details. There are lots of talks about how to implement lenses. They are often very hard to understand. If, if you want to look under the hood, there are nice papers and blog posts available, but this cannot be explained in 20 minutes. How nice were the error messages when you were developing these examples? <laughs> right. So, so the one problem with the lens library is that you can get some very hairy type error messages. And there's actually a new Haskell library called Optics that allows you to do almost all the thing that, things that the lens library does, but it gives better error messages. But it's extremely new.